Hello, this is Wyland with Drone Rental Supply, and for this video, we're going to be talking about pre tripping the DRS 250 quad uh, when you get it or just before you fly. So, the first thing we're going to talk about is the controller. So, this is what the controller looks like when you first get it. Uh, when you first take it out of the box, what you want to do is you want to make sure the throttle's all the way down, like this. What I would recommend is to have all of these switches up. And the reason why I would recommend to have, to have them all of them up is because this specific switch right here controls how much power your quad's going to get. So in the backmost position, that's going to be beginner mode, then it's going to be advanced, and then it's full manual. So if, if this is beginner mode and you just remember to have all the switches up, you always know that you're always beginning in be beginner mode, and then you can advance upward as you see fit. That's just a personal preference. Uh, these switches here actually don't do anything so if you have them in a different position it won't matter but it's personal preference to have it uh, that way for myself. If we flip to the back this is where the battery compartment is. Uh, it comes standard with uh, a battery holder for AA batteries and you're going to need eight AA batteries in order to fill this up. Uh, this holder only goes in one way. If you look right here, these notches up on top fit into these notches inside the controller. So, as you can see on these notches specifically, they only go in one way. So, when you take out this battery holder, just make sure that you see these notches and that they go back in the same way. The plug right here plugs into a port right over on this side. So, if I flip this a little bit, can you see it? Uh, it'll plug in and it only goes in one way and I would recommend that you don't try to force it in all the way because if you ever need to take this little plug out it's going to be really hard if you jam it in all the way so just make sure it's snug and that you know it's not loose because you don't want to lose power but you don't really want to jam it all the way in. So let me go ahead and put that in. We won't be putting batteries into this specific one. So. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch over to another controller where I can show you what it looks like when it powers on. So I went ahead and swapped in a controller that we're actively using. This is our controller for our test model. So if I go ahead and turn on this controller right now, what you hear is a beep which tells you it's ready to go. On the upper right hand side you'll notice that it has a battery indicator. So right now as you can see it's fully charged. When it gets down to one block, you really want to replace the batteries because you don't really want to lose communication with your quad. That's not something that's really worth doing. You don't really want to use it to the last drop. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut it off. I'm going to show you what happens if we have the throttle at a different position. So say you know, you're carrying it around, it's going to be in the middle position. If you turn it on, what's going to, what's going to do is it's going to beep at you and it's going to tell you throttle. And that's because the transmitter won't start communicating until the throttle's all the way down at 0%. So once it's at 0%, if I start moving this, you'll notice the throttle percentage will move. Just remember that any time you turn on your controller for the first time, if the throttle, which is the left stick, is not at the zero position or the downward most position, you're going to have to move it all the way down in order for the controller to start communicating with your quad. So let's go ahead and move on to the quadcopter. So if this is your first time out or if you're just doing a pre-trip, what I would recommend is the first thing that you would want to look at is the leads going into your video transmitter. So you just want to make sure that this lead is properly seated and plugged in. Then I would go ahead and look at the receiver inside of the, uh, uh, inside of the quadcopter. So you just want to make sure the leads going into the receiver is also properly plugged in. Next, I would look at the uh, flight controller, which is the CC3D flight controller. And again, you just want to make sure all of the leads are plugged in and seated nicely. This will ensure that uh, when you're flying out there that nothing comes out and you won't lose control of your quadcopter. So let's go ahead and move on to the propellers. So one of the most important things to note about the propellers is that some of them will spin clockwise and some of them will spin counterclockwise. So let's go ahead and talk about the black nuts first. So what you'll notice on the black nut is that this particular uh, motor 
and also on the corresponding side over there, this one will actually spin clockwise. So it'll spin in this direction. But in order to take off the nut, you're going to have to uh, loosen it in the opposite direction. So if it spins clockwise, you're going to un you're going to loosen it by turning counterclockwise. And the reason why we do that is that as the motor spins, uh, this nut will never uh, become loose because to t uh, you will always keep tightening the screw if, if loosening it is in the opposite direction. This is why they do that. So by spinning counterclockwise, we'll take off uh, this propeller. You'll notice that on the motor itself, we have a spacer in here. It's also black, so it might be difficult to see, but this spacer will help center this propeller because the hole is actually larger than th the thread on this motor because this propeller was meant to go on multiple models of uh, motors. So uh, as it comes uh, from us, we've already installed the spacer and uh, the propeller will be nicely centered. So in order to tighten the nut again, all we have to do is spin it in counterclockwise and then it will tighten down. So that's the black nut. So let's go ahead and move over to the silver nut. So on the silver nut, this one will actually spin counterclockwise. So this is the direction it's going to spin. And in order to take this nut out, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and take it off by spinning it counterclockwise. So here it is off. We actually painted this silver just, to, uh, just for our own sake so that we know that this goes on to the silver nut. And again, if you look closely right here, there is a spacer. So we'll put that back on and then to tighten it down, we'll just go ahead and spin it on counterclockwise. Now when you tighten this, you don't really need to crank it down real hard. Just a few fingers and hand tighten is all you need. Remember, these things will self tighten and uh, you don't really need to crank on them really hard. This way it's easy to take off when you have to replace the propellers when you crash. So we've gone over all the important things. We've gone over that the throttle's down and that your controller has power, so that's good. We've gone over to make sure that all your wiring is checked, make sure all of your propellers are nice and snug. So let's go ahead and start plugging in the power and we can give you a demo of how to turn this quadcopter on and off. So go ahead and undo the strap. This is the XT60 connector, which you're going to connect with your Lumineer 1300 milliamp battery. So go ahead and slide that in there. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have your uh, voltage checker connected in there. And this will be a warning indicator on when your uh, LiPo battery is running low on power and you want to land. Because if you drain this all the way down, it's never going to charge all the way back up. And then you just lost a $25 battery. So in order to connect this up, you want the black wire to be on the first pin and then it'll boot on up. So once this boots up, there's a little button up top and you, we go into detail on this in our uh, voltage checker video. So if you wanna know all the instructions and all the details, go ahead and check out that video. But I went ahead and I'm gonna set this to 3.5 volts. So at 3.5 volts, if any of the cells fall below 3.5 volts, this is gonna start beeping at me. And that'll tell me that I have maybe about a minute left on the battery to fly, so it's time to bring it in. Go ahead and have all of this lined up. And then you can, you just really wanna firmly snug this down. And then what we've done is that we've had a, uh, the strap to be long enough to where it'll wrap all the way to the bottom so that everything is nicely sealed and snugged, snugged in. So once that's done, we can go ahead and plug in our quadcopter. So you'll hear a series of beeps and what you wanna do is you wanna leave the quadcopter alone until you see if you zoom in right here, you'll see a, a light. 
and it's blinking very slowly. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, power it off and power it back on to see the difference. So. These connectors can be very difficult sometimes, so I'm going to power it back up. And you'll notice that the blue light is blinking very quickly right now. So you don't want to disturb the quadcopter until the blue light starts blinking nice and slowly. Because this is during its boot up period, it's trying to get everything set up. So once that's done, this is ready to go. At this point, you can go ahead and, so I'm going to go ahead and move the controller towards me. And I'm going to move this quadcopter over to this side because this quadcopter is going to be ready to go once I turn on this transmitter. So if I go ahead and turn on the transmitter, throttle all the way down, this whole system is now engaged. It's ready to fly. So I'm going to do a brief demo of what it looks like when we activate these motors. And I'm not going to power up all the way. So this is just a quick demonstration of it. In order to turn on the motors and start ready to fly, you need to take the throttle and then move it all the way to the right and just hold it there until you see the motors turn on. So here's a quick demonstration of that. So move it over. So what you see is the motors automatically turn off. And the reason why it automatically turns off is because I have the throttle at the zero position. So if you're flying, once it comes down and you put it to the zero position or all the way down on the left stick, the motors will automatically turn off. So in order to keep the motor spinning, what you want to do is you want to move it over to the left and then just give it a slight amount of power so that the motors will spin up and keep spinning. So I can show you a demo of that real quick. So just in. So as you can see right here, this is 3% power. If I move it all the way down to 0% power again, it'll shut off. So that's how you power your quadcopter on and off. And at this point, you're ready to go and you're ready to fly. So one last thought before we wrap up for the day on this video is that while you have the voltage checker connected to the battery and while you're flying, if you have the throttle all the way up for an extended period of time, you're going to hear this battery eventually beep. That's because you're really sucking out a lot of power from this battery and these cells will fall below uh, either 3.5. Generally, I like to set these to 3.4, but it's really a preference uh, from you. 3.5 is much safer. 3.4 is still very safe, and that's why I go to that. But you're going to hear it beep. Um, there's still usually plenty of power left. One of these batteries generally will last you about five minutes in the air. Just realize that if you're constantly at full throttle when you're flying, as in you're flying very aggressively, or if you're flying in high winds, that you're going to hear this uh, battery checker beep even though the battery is not uh, completely drained of power. But uh, this concludes the uh, intro video on how to uh, check your quad when you get it from us. And it also serves as a uh, good pre-flight. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. Until next time, fly safely.